All right, today we're gonna to talk about PWM frequency settings from your ESCs to your motors and how that can save you on your whoops and toothpicks and smaller quads up to 30% or even possibly more on battery life. So people this winter have been flying JESC and in there there is a option for either 24 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz PWM frequency from the ESC to the motor. Now this has nothing to do with the loop rate or loop times or communication from the flight controller to the ESC, but the ESC and its pulses, three phase pulses to the motors, how quickly that cycle is operating. The default for BL Heli S is 24 kilohertz. So all BL Heli S ESCs are be using that. In BL Heli 32, you can change it anywhere from 24 kilohertz up to 48 kilohertz. So a lot of people on five inches quads uh, notice that if you go up to 48 kilohertz, it's a little smoother, but there really hasn't been a lot of talk about battery life. When it comes to whoop class, these are little motors, little batteries, low voltage. So it makes more of a difference. Folks have been talking about some anecdotal evidence of longer flights with the JESE 48 kilohertz PDUM frequency version of the firmware. And so I put it to the test. I used my Mobile 7 Whoop here. And what I did is didn't change anything on it whatsoever. Use the exact same batteries. If you've noticed the two flights running on the screen, that's both of the flights, the 48 kilohertz and the 24 kilohertz. And you'll see at the end result there how the 48 kilohertz runs quite a bit longer which is pretty significant. So I wanted to dig in that a little bit more. In both flights, I had it logged, and this is the amperage. And you can see the differences here. The 24 kilohertz has a overall trend of higher amp draw throughout the entire flight than the 48 kilohertz. When you take the amp draw and just average it across the entire flight, you can see the difference here is about 28% increase in amp draw which then obviously corresponds to a flight time as well. When you're looking at the numbers on the charts or these numbers here, you actually have to divide them by 100. That's just how black box is recorded with Betaflight. Most of the stuff in the CLI is times 100, so you have to always divide it by 100 after. Now I exported those out to Excel because sometimes in black box, you can see here, I was trying to first look at it by just showing a graphic of the you know where the amperage is on the black box lines here but you can see it's a little off skew and that happens in black box sometimes with some of these weird fields that people aren't looking at too much but you can see here the values 1.96 amps and 1.97 amps but you can see the this is below the line this is above the line so it's the same value just kind of represented differently and if you ever come across that with some obscure values or looking at black box you can always go up to the top here and hit export to CVS, that pushes it into Excel and then you can just map it in Excel. A little side tip there. Now the next thing I wanted to look at is did one have more noise in the gyro signal than the other that 48 kilohertz operate smoother than 24 kilohertz? And you can see on the traces here I have the D term shown on both and I have the zoom factor pushed all the way to 10 so you can kind of see a larger section of the flight. In this flight it was very controlled. I was just zooming around as you could see in the videos in angle mode trying not to hit stuff just kind of taking it easy so the flights are very similar to each other you can see there's really not too much difference between the noise level here i did then dump both logs into pid toolbox and did the stats page on that on the left we have the 24 kilohertz on the right we have the 48 kilohertz and you can see just you know my average where i was spending you know most of my time on the roll axis pitch axis so on and so forth so they're about the same obviously there's some differences here did notice down here something interesting that I, my throttle percentage was a little bit lower on the 48 kilohertz than on the 24 kilohertz. And oh, with the same track area and just finer on the basement as you saw there, I'm going to attribute that that there was a little bit more amp draw. So my throttle on average was just a little bit higher to kind of compensate for that. That's anecdotal. I have any backup, but I just saw that was something interesting there. So I didn't notice it on the sticks or anything, but I thought that was an interesting point. This is some spectrum plots on the two, so 24 kilohertz uh, on this side, 48 kilohertz over here. The 24 kilohertz had some more low frequency pit error or oscillation slash vibrations than the 48 kilohertz. And the question really comes up, okay, why 
is there more power usage at 24 kilohertz than 48 kilohertz? And I'll link to an article down in the video description. So do check out this article. There's a lot of good information in here and it talks about the dampening and the braking and also that the motors that I was using were the 0802 and they were showing less of a benefit. So there's still a big benefit with the 0802. So you'd see even more at the 0603 level uh, size motors. Also do check out what Joe is talking about here, other reasons why there's a power savings through a higher PWM frequency. Uh, check out what he's talking about right here. These guys are smarter than I am in this regard. So yeah, what they said. So looking at the 2D spectrographs in PID toolbox, you can actually see the oscillations kind of back and forth. Now I'm assuming this is the dampening. You can uh, clearly here, you can see there's more oscillation vibration at the 24 kilohertz and there is at the 48 kilohertz. So it's a little smoother operation now. These are the same PIDs. Do note I did tune it on 48 kilohertz. So my PIDs are based around that. So, you know, if you were on 24 kilohertz and you tuned around that, would these oscillations still be there? I would, I would hope not because you would have tuned it appropriately to not have oscillations and overshoots. So there's the handoff. When we're talking about larger quad classes and speaking to Joe on this topic, do keep in mind for like a five inch, you know, maybe check it out. But one downside of higher PDBM frequency rates is you might not have as much dampening or braking force either, which could hurt you in prop wash. So as I'm sure as you saw right now, by now with me yammering on this far that the flight on 24 kilohertz was about four minutes and seven seconds and the flight on 48 kilohertz same quad same everything all i did was just flash one flash the other on the the escs here back to back same batteries uh same charge limit and i drew the batteries down on both until this started to beep and when you see me heading back to the storage area that's when this was starting to beep uh, and it was getting around a little bit below three volts. So they went up to a 4.35 overcharge on the little 1S batteries here, and there's two in series, brought that down to about three volts per cell. And as soon as this beep, just to keep that constant, that's when I, I headed back and landed. So we're talking about a minute, a minute and a half difference. That's pretty substantial. So it's not like close by margins. To validate the results too, then I, the first flight I did was 48 kilohertz, then I did 24 kilohertz, saw the big difference. Then I put the ESC firmware back up to the 48 kilohertz to see if I got the same result as the first flight. And I did this, the second flight I did on the 48 kilohertz was about five minutes and 34 seconds instead of five minutes and 32 seconds. So it's right around the same. And it does show that the, the precision of doing the same flying around the basement kind of easy like that does get around the same battery consumption uh, rate with flight moves and things of that nature because of the, the two 48 kilohertz flights lining up pretty close. Of course, most of the time I'm flying this, I'm getting you know the five minutes, 30 seconds. I was used to that. I just thought that's how it was until uh, actually Joe mentioned it to me. Hey, he was hearing a lot of good uh, feedback about the 48 kilohertz, you know, maybe do a video on it. I thought, well, let me test it first, see if it's, you know, folklore or reality. And uh, yeah, myth confirmed. So the next question is obviously, how do you get the 48 kilohertz version on your whoop? If you have BL Heli 32 on your smaller quad classes, first of all, what kind of future world are you living in? Do you like fly to work in a car? I mean, I, I've never seen any of these other than BL Heli S. So, but if you do have BL Heli 32, you would just go into BL Heli 32 firmware and just change it up to 48 kilohertz. There's lots of videos on YouTube about that. Just search for it and you can see those references. For BL Heli S ESCs, the only way I know how to do it as of this moment is to get it on JESC. And JESC for this part is free, so don't worry. Not that you should be that worried about it to begin with. I mean, Joe's the one that's developing all this stuff. Six bucks is well worth his all the effort he's put into a lot of stuff at Beta Flight. Sometimes it people are weird. But um, go ahead and plug in your quad, and I will drop the link down below where you can download the JESC configurator. You would, of course, download that. That's here. You don't install it or anything. You just unzip it, and you can run the EXC. Uh, most of these whoops, if the ESCs are on the board with the flight controller, you don't even need to plug in a battery. You just plug in the USB, uh, connect, hit read setup. And this will all work like this if you have BL Heli S on your ESCs currently. So you just connect to it. 
Once the screen comes up here, you're going to want to go down to the bottom here and hit flash all and then go into the GS, JESC and you're going to want to pick this JESC 2.2 48 kilohertz PWM early access. Click on that and then you would hit flash. Uh, here's the 24 kilohertz stable release. These are with dampening turned off altogether. Some guys wanted to do some experimenting with that. So you can go ahead and check that out if you want to. Uh, and this is the older version, the 2.1, the 24 kilohertz. So we're going to just go with the 48. You'd hit, I'm not going to do it. You'd hit flash here, and then it will go through and it will flash each of the ESCs. Consequently, if you did want to run RPM filtering, which you should, if you're not running RPM filtering, you should. I mean, it's just so much easier to do filter tuning with the sliders with RPM. The dynamic notch for these little whoops then is free to jump on frame residence, which a lot of them have it because of the ducts and all the stuff that's around the, the props. So the dynamic notch can go on to duty with that, which allows you to push your low passes up even more, reducing phase delay and doing a better job of filter attenuation. So it's a, it's a no-brainer for any of these smaller quad classes to have RPM filtering. You can flash the telemetry module here by hitting flash all, and then it would it go into instructions where you can purchase a 401 telemetry module for six bucks, and then you can have RPM filtering for your, your whoop classes. I have a whole video about that. I will link that up into the upper right here as well for some additional information on that. Again, if you don't want to do the telemetry module, you don't need to. You don't have to do that for here. You just don't, you can't run RPM filtering, but you can still have the 48 kilohertz and for the power savings part of it. Okay, so that is it. So what have you experienced for power savings if you're making this switch up to the 48 kilohertz? I'd love to hear it down in the comments below. I was honestly really surprised uh, when I did the test flight and it came back with that much difference. I thought it was going to be, you know, 10 seconds or something kind of minor. And, uh, but the minute and a half, that's, that's a lot. And um, it just... It just really surprised me. It sounds like even smaller motors will have even more savings. It sounds like the savings diminishes as you get to larger motors. So somewhere in the, you know, as you get above the toothpick class, you know, somewhere midstream of the micros, you know, between a three inch and a four inch, you know, it kind of diminishes more and more. And maybe by the five inch, it's it's really minor. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't run the test on a five inch. If you do do some tests, make sure you have a similar flight pattern. So, you know, doing something in angle mode where you're just kind of cruising around a little bit, you know, you doing a lot of acro and flips and rolls. When you're doing flips and rolls, that draws a lot of amps to reverse the motors to arrest that kind of stuff. So a lot of variability there. You want to do something more gradual, maybe a long range out, a long range back, or something of that nature uh, to really compare. Now, obviously, please do, you know, make sure you use the same battery. You can't use different batteries. You can't use different quads. Like, try to be a little scientific for yourself to, to see if it, uh, it's actually making a difference for you if, if you are trying this on some of the higher quad classes. There's no doubt in my mind that this is definitely a, a huge savings here which was uh, quite a nice surprise. Again, thanks everybody, and I hope this helped.